I'm delighted to sh share this session uh, with my colleague Silpa Sama, who was a member of the admissions team at uh, Stanford. Uh, Silpa, you know, so much has been said uh, about uh, the Graduate School of Business at Stanford. As, as you reflect on the time that you spent at the school, the impressions that it left, you know, what, what, what really makes the GSB so different, so distinct? Absolutely. The MBA experience at the GSB is truly transformational. Uh, Stanford MBA students, they care passionately about making a positive impact. And the GSB is dedicated to empowering them to grow into the leaders who really will change lives, change organizations, and change the world. This is a program that inspires you to really expand your mindset by meeting new people, discovering new ideas, exploring new paths and opportunities. And this is not just across the GSB campus, but across all of Stanford University. And as many people know, the GSB has remarkably strong offerings in tech, in VC, in entrepreneurship, and social impact. But what's equally important to know is that the collaboration between graduate schools at Stanford is quite unique. For example, Stanford has a really strong engineering school and design school, and both of those schools collaborate frequently with the GSB to create unique classes and experiences. And moreover, there's also a policy of grade non-disclosure. So you're really encouraged to explore different things to help create your perspective. And beyond that, furthermore, the uh, program emp empowers you to become a more innovative thinker by exposing you to rigorous core courses, hundreds of case analyses, experience, experiential learning opportunities, the world-renowned faculty and expert practitioners, innovative teaching methodologies like scenarios, role plays, different management concepts, simulations, global emergence, really just gives you a strong toolkit to, to work with. And another unique characteristic is that this is a place where you can truly build your community. I know a common stereotype of high caliber MBA programs is a really cutthroat environment, but there's a real culture of vulnerability and support and accessibility here. You're gonna be learning from and working alongside students from all over the world. It's a really collaborative environment and open, honest, candid feedback, it's a hallmark of the experience. There really is an incomparable spirit of innovation all throughout campus and Silicon Valley as well. So you're gonna benefit from the guidance from the Silicon Valley innovators, and you can leverage the network of generations of Stanford alumni as you move along in your journey. And equally notable is the unparalleled focus on personal leadership development. At the GSB, you're gonna develop an understanding of how your behaviors impact others and how to increase your connection with others in order to expand your influence. So you'll learn to lead with responsibility to your organization, to the world, to society at large, and you're gonna gain exposure to different leadership styles and frameworks as well. So you can try on different styles and receive really can, candid feedback on that. Um, for example, with the leadership offerings, um, in your very first quarter, MBA students, they're gonna be ho um, honing their soft skills in a course called Leadership Labs, answering questions like, how do you motivate people? How do you have difficult conversations? And all of this culminates in an all-day simulation called the Executive Challenge, where the students will be putting these skills into practice. And the offering of leadership electives is just, you know, it's really expansive, really weighty. And one of the, one of the popular ones, Interpersonal Dynamics, um, has been the most popular one for 45 years running, in fact. The students practice key leadership skills with peer feedback, and they learn how to connect across differences, communicate with others, strengthen their influence. Really powerful stuff. Finally, um, what stands out about Stanford, uh, that GSB truly espouses the belief that you have the power to change the future and create a life of impact. These two years at the GSB will grant you the knowledge and the skills to be bold and inspire action. You'll not only be working toward achieving your professional aspirations, but also just making great strides in terms of your uh, personal development as well. I'm wondering during the pandemic if they had to rename the touchy feely course, given that that was anything but what we could do. <laughs> um, and, and, and just as you sort of also bring in the aspect of vulnerability as, as you look at sort of um, mm -hmm. in, into relationships, it's uh, so. Of course, with, with Kirsten, the rest of the admissions team, you were tasked every year with so many thousands of applications. Mm -hmm. To, to craft a class of around 417 individuals, 417 distinct, unique stories. Mm -hmm. But if we think about it in terms of you know, what, what the school is really looking for, so what are perhaps the common traits, but also then room for each of those unique aspects of, of those that you offered a place to? Sure, so at a high level, the GSB is looking for three key areas, intellectual vitality, 
demonstrated leadership potential, and personal qualities and contributions. Now, elements of each of these can be found in every section of an application, really. And when people think of intellectual vitality, the first thing they, that comes to mind generally is, no, GPA, test scores. But really, it's more than that. Stanford's a vibrant place where folks solve all sorts of complex problems and take intellectual risks. So the admissions committee really is looking to understand your relationship with knowledge and assess how intellectually curious and how intellectually engaged you are. What are you excited to learn? How do you learn? How do you share knowledge with others? And for the demonstrated leadership potential, the GSB aims to have graduating classes of students with an increased ability to lead. The way to drive meaningful change and large scale change is through solid leadership. So as such, what they're looking for um, is not just what leadership skills you have now, but also they're making an assessment of how open you are to learning new leadership skills. And demonstrated leadership qualities, they can come from the workplace, of course, but also from extracurricular involvements or even at home in your personal life, like stepping up to lead or take over in a time of crisis. The thing to recognize here is that someone doesn't need formal leadership experience. Really what the GSB is looking for is let's look at the qualities that you do have and how they might contribute to your effectiveness as a leader. For example, self-awareness, examples of helping develop someone else's skills at work or in other organizations, strategic problem-solving skills or mindset. The admissions committee wants to know what you've contributed and how you're performing regardless of what level you're in. And then finally, that, that third bucket, the personal qualities and contributions. The GSB is aiming to build a class that contains a wide range of perspectives and experiences in order to deliver a broad array of insights and problem solving approaches, and also to enrich the community, of course. So at the core, diversity among the class helps students understand the experiences of others, challenge, it helps them challenge their own assumptions and develop new perspectives. So the admissions committee for personal qualities and contributions, they'll consider an applicant's values and beliefs, passions, their experiences, their ambitions, to really think about what an, what an individual might gain from the GSB program and also how they would contribute to it. So my advice would be to use the application to offer insights on how one's background or upbringing or culture might shape their perspective and really convey how you share that perspective and how it influences what you do and how you go about doing something. Fortune, of course, for working with so many clients targeting Stanford and other mm -hmm. top schools. We often yeah. start with Stanford because it's such a wonderful application in, in how it mm -hmm. sort of encourages that self-exploration <clears throat> and introspection. So I guess as, as we're thinking, well, you know, my academic background, you know, my professional experience, all of this uh, community engagement that I'm sharing, what would be your advice to, to ensure that the individual stands out and perhaps stands out in the, in the right way? You know, something that, that's really sort of uh, authentic uh, to, to them as an individual. Sure. At a high level, what stands out is a really strong trajectory and a demonstrated pattern of excellence. Strong applicants are people who will not only be great students on campus, but they're also going to have a meaningful and a positive impact wherever they go once they graduate from the GSB. The candidates who stand out are the ones who have really taken initiative and have jumped on opportunities and dedicated themselves to making an impact. So the questions applicants should be asking themselves is, given the opportunities available to me, because that varies by person, how have I made the most of them? How have I impacted the environments around me, regardless of the career stage that I'm in or the organizations that I was a part of or the industry I was part, part of, how have I made an impact? Another thing that stands out is a really strong sense of self-awareness. So I would suggest to applicants to really know why they wanna to come to the GSB. They should convey what they would get from the experience and what makes it a good fit for them. And finally, compelling candidates demonstrate authenticity. They bring their whole selves to the application process. They discuss their interests outside of work and they highlight their unique qualities. Because the application, essentially, it's a story of who they are. So they fill in the details accordingly. Right. Now you talk about sort of why Stanford, how it fits in that part of the trajectory and, and the self-awareness that's embedded in this iconic question of, you know, what matters most to you and why. So 
to take us through perhaps um, you know the essays, even you know some of the short answer questions that are you know so important as part of the application form, uh, and maybe some of the advice that you would then share with applicants to the GSB. Right. Sure. So my first piece of advice for the essays would be to answer the question. Sounds simple, but really resist the urge to over-strategize or to push some sort of agenda. Really take the time to reflect and answer in an authentic way. Specifically for what matters most, talk about the things that are intrinsic to who you are and how they shaped and influenced the way you move through the world. It's okay to be vulnerable here. You just really ask yourself, what do you want the admissions committee to know about you? Because this is a really unique opportunity to learn more about you in your words. And keep in mind, it's important to cover not only the what matters most and the examples of that, but also the why. So make sure you explain not just the what, but the reasoning as well. What was the inspiration for this? For the why Stanford, ask yourself how how the resources at the institution are going to assist you as you go on to the next leap of your professional career and your personal journey. You'll need to have at least a general vision of why you want to go to business school at the GSB so you can make the most of that two-year experience. The essay should articulate why you want to be in the program and what you hope to get out of it. So keep in mind the GSB admissions committee, they aren't judging how feasible your goals sound. It really is about why you want to go to business school and how it's going to help you along in your career. And one important thing to keep in mind as you craft this essay is different MBA schools have different cultures. They have different offerings and different opportunities. So recycling or copy and pasting from another school's essay really can be detrimental. It's best to just give this some thought and write it from scratch. And um, taking a tangential move, or actually, no, when we, when we um, assess essays, when you're doing your, your various edits, here's one tip on it. Um, hand your essay to someone who knows you well and ask them to read it. Ask if it sounds like you and see if it sounds like your authentic voice. Another tip is you can give them the essay without the question on it and ask them what question they think you answered. So that'll really give you a sense of, Is this me? Am I conveying my authentic self? And am I answering what what was asked of me? So moving beyond essays, the application also has some optional short answers. And one one, um, useful tip here is it's a good place for the optional short answers to discuss something you want the GSB to know that you don't discuss anywhere else in the app. It's okay to leave this blank. It is optional after all. It's okay to leave this blank if you feel like the rest of your application covered all of the key impacts and contributions or details about your background that you'd like to highlight. There's really no need to restate something that's already covered um, in your resume or your work history because the GSB has admitted students that have not filled in the optional short answers. They've admitted students that have. (laughs) So truly just include something that you feel would be additive and offer a fresh example or insight. Right. And moving on past that and talking about one more optional piece, the additional information section, not an essay, it's an additional information section, um, and it is optional. So this is where you would mention any other contextual uh, um, information that's relevant for the admissions team to know. For example, let's say there's a circumstance that you touch on in the essay, but you only cover the takeaway. You can include the context here or if there have been any extenuating circumstances that negatively impacted your academic record, um, health issues, personal issues, anything of that sort, the additional information section is the place to mention it. Or as another example, let's say your career trajectory might not seem intuitive at first, or there's a career move that might you believe might raise an eyebrow. Um, if you aren't talking about it elsewhere, the additional information section is a good place to mention that. 